Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Ursa Ryan and one of these very rare things has just happened. The end of the last video seemed to perfectly match up with the end of the recording session and here I am on a brand new day with a brand new video with Fort Lisbon. Yesterday's video was a trial, it was a survival battle. Us against the odds. Can we still do it? Can we pull this one city challenge out of the ashes? There's not a lot of hope, but occasionally you find something that does give hope, like the fact that Victoria is now ready to join in on this war. This could be the day. This could be the day, but let's talk strategy. We are currently going for walls. After that point, I need yields, specifically science yields. I'm gonna flip over to state workforce, go for government plaza, and we might pick up campus into harbor. I think that's gonna be the best thing to do for me right now. This city will need to go at some point. I do not like it. It is well into my domain, my space, as will this one eventually. That's less of a priority. We are gonna inevitably hit a dark age but maybe the dark age from a dark age we will rise crazier things have happened eh crazier things have happened i think i'm going to make a play at temple of artemis it's crazy i know it's crazy but it could be worth it and if the borders go one two three four five we want to get onto that cattle well i'm thinking temple of artemis down on this tile next to my capital it's either going to be there on one of these wood tiles that could be the alternative but at the moment i'm saving gold because i need to just emergency buy troops it's even 60 gold of tile expense right now I don't think that's gonna be worth it for me I might also wait to get a builder to work the marble really quickly so yeah Temple of Artemis food housing happiness good spread of resources around we'll have with the zoo extension remember the zoo extension we're gonna get later into the game if you've never played this mod before there is an extension you can buy if you've got a zoo in the city and this will increase regional effects from wonders in the city which uh, reach three tiles further so we will get this pasture 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 camp pasture 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 so it's at least plus seven. If we can get that, that'll be very handy. Peace though. Peace in our time will be very necessary. I want to destroy this city. This one's also not particularly helpful, but right now we don't exactly have freedom of movement. We are technologically behind. We're not outmanned, but we could be outgunned if we're not careful. And I'd say this particular setup of hills and forests makes attacking this city very awkward indeed, but we'll give it a good go. The wide and tall mod gives us a fifth option for a dark age and it's called Nobles and Peasants. You gain an era score for the first improvement with housing and food in each city. It can trigger a second time in cities of at least 10 population. Gain era score for each district you're building that provides immunity. So this could be a clever way of getting it, but I think three inquiry might be the better option because we're more likely to get era score from Eurekas, given the fact that we've basically got no Eurekas at the moment at all. So we'll work on that. Let's unlock the campus now. My archers are doing decent damage. That is very decent damage. I'm, you know what? We're just going to charge forward here. I'm going to see if I can put the squeeze on. We can raise this city with the fact that I've got 150 grievances against me. The world won't even bat an eyelid. Won't even mind. We'll just claim this land for our own. We'll make them regret ever coming here. That's kind of the plan. Although, look, here's the peace deal. Peace deal is being offered now. There's a heavy chariot in the city. That's not ideal. That increases the city strength. That means our archers are going to get killed if I continue this fight. Uh, if only there was a way that my archers could stand from a distance and attack this city a little bit more. I'm thinking I wait until mana arms. That's normally the best time to attack because it means that I've got 45 strength warriors that can hit the walls of a city down. My archers are going to get shredded. I can pick up crossbows. There's a lot of sense in potentially waiting here. I mean, what am I going to pick up right now? The city must die, but I'm not going to be able to work any of these tiles for a long, long time. My city's barely grown. So you know what? I think I might take a nice peace deal here. Although Gaul is now involved. Maybe Gaul will do it for me. That's the thing. All right, if I form more of a defensive perimeter, there's a chance that Gaul might actually do this for me because they have very powerful units. Maybe they'll raise these two. They could take the cities and keep them, but assuming loyalty is going to be a problem for them because they're on the other side, we might get away with this. This is good. And actually, this is a perpetual archer leveler. That's good for me. Oh, there's multiple sources of iron over here. That could be a problem for us in the longer run. We'll, we'll figure that out later. Oh, they're offering a lot of gold now. A lot of gold. Don't I don't think I want to take this deal just yet, but we're keeping an eye on this. This this suddenly gives me hope. Campus unlocked. Let's find iron of my own, just in case I've got some. We'll go from there. We just need at least one of these units to make their way across the river, and then my archers can just pepper them. Ah, here we go. This is exactly what I wanted you to do. One attack, two attacks, three attacks, four attacks. Unit dead. If I leave my units in exactly the same place, maybe they'll send the second, but they're probably going to leave it garrisoned. Go on, meet me in field of battle. Oh, they moved it out 
about the city. Hey, that's not a bad idea. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I don't mind that. Get a little bit of damage in on that unit before it can hide. Units, in you go. Another unit spawns from nowhere, the heavy chariot. That's a little annoying. I would appreciate it if you didn't do that. Let's move the warriors around a little bit more. Put you onto this tile. Now I can get two archers in to attack. Move you to that, you to that. Let you upgrade. This is not bad for a setup for an attack. Move off state workforce now. We'll go back to early empire. I can build a specialty district. If we can pick up Temple of Artemis though, that's going to be so good. Although getting a population has just lost me 10% production, which isn't ideal. Oh, they just came out of the city in order to attack me and they're building Mashi Pishu, everyone. Oh my lord, what a flex. What an outrageous flex. This is a garrison archer. Oh, I'm going to use their own holy sight against them. Oh, I love it. Get that attack and kill. Nope, that attack and kill. There you go. The city is sieged. The city is sieged. Oh my god. Just attack. Get rid of it quickly. Never did I think that we might have success like this. Oh my goodness. Attack. 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 Even the archers are just pushing through here, you know. One, two, three. Take city. There's state workforce because I now own a district temporarily. And early empires boosted because temporarily I own six population. And it's dad because this is a one city challenge. But that means we've got space again. Do we just continue in on the war? Make sure that this city is destroyed or do we just say grievances wise we're pretty much on even now? Let's take the peace deal while it's on the table. Yeah, you know what? Oh yeah, okay, cool. Peace is good. Peace is good. Gaul can kill that city for all I care. Amazing. And we've even got a luxury as well, which means we've got a tiny bit more production towards my wonder. And Corvée, 15% bonus production towards wonders as well. Conscription, which means I'm no longer hemorrhaging money from having a massive army. Get it finished. Get it finished now. And Pingala, connoisseur, do it. Leaven culture. This could be it. This could be the start of the run. Maybe this run is on. If we can pick up Temple of Artemis, maybe this run is on. Stop giving me the wonder being built noise. I really don't like that. Buddhism. Which other religion have we met? Anyone else made a religion? No, it's only Buddhism with Jesuit education around us right now. It's not the best. If I'm going to have a bit of spare faith, maybe that'll be a decent option for me. I don't know. How's that for a rough setup? Dam, aqueduct, industrial zone, quarry, Venetian arsenal, Fort Lisbon. That's not bad, is it? Okay. Could we make it even better? I think we could make this even better because I could actually put the aqueduct in there, pop the dam down on that tile instead. Then we can go government plaza into campus next to the mountain to give it plus two. And we'll probably put something down there as well. Yeah, that's not bad. Let's do that. Not getting rid of anything. We'll dam this river to make sure it doesn't kill us. Although I've just taken bronze working. Has that ruined any of my plans? No, but it's put iron down on two tiles up here. That'll give me loads more production. Oh, I don't mind that. Everyone back. Everyone back. We're not leaving here. I'll send out a couple of scouts and galleys when I can just to explore around the world. But in the meantime, we are retreating back to our ancestral home. I want the harbour. I want to go and explore the world. I'll send out some scouts as well. Actually, we'll start opening borders just whilst it's nice and cheap. I would like to go and explore later. And into political philosophy. Pingala, researcher. Loads more science. We can get our harbour up nice and quick now. Well, I've actually settled on iron. I wondered why I was getting two iron per turn. Amazing. Okay, that will, that will probably sell. Yes, yes. Attack it. Destroy it. Raise it to the floor. If you can raise it, Gaul, you will be absolutely my new favourite person. They still think I'm quite weak. There is a very large chance that Gaul still might attack me at this point. That's a risk we're willing to take. Astrology is good. We'll go sailing. I'm never going to get the boost for that. Celestial navigation. We, yeah, we're getting very, very few boosts. We need to work on that. Mining a resource and mining iron, though. I'll be worth two era score, so let's go and pick that up quickly. Okay, Gaul took the city over, but they kept it. Loyalty-wise, they may not hang on to it if Kemmer, for instance, is very aggressive on population raising. They, we might get away with this, but we, we will have to go to war at some point. I think we're going to have to go to war just to protect our land, protect our borders. We want five tile borders here. We want wide and tall to be as wide and tall as possible. You are pushing your luck, friend. <laughs> Okay, we will ignore that for a little bit. Temple of Artemis, let's just celebrate for now whilst we watch the AI settle more cities next to my one city. Each camp, pasture and plantation within four tiles of this one to provide one amenity, plus I get food, plus I get housing, plus I get era score. Fort Lisbon is growing and content, very content now. Oh, that's good. This uh, this is all mine, wheel and iron working boosting, amazing. And in order to make this city ecstatic, I'm gonna go and improve that source 
Palace of Horse, or am I? No, we're gonna go and chop that wood down because I want to campus on that spot. Let's instead get the government plaza down. We can start doing things like Amani tour. Gaul is finally buying Diplo favor as well. As long as they are buying it for cash up front, I'm willing to trade it with them. I don't trust them to honor a deal over the long term. Certainly do not. Oh, I'm looking forward to finally trading. Portugal with no trade routes is a very strange experience and I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> at all oh here comes Gaul right we knew this might happen at some point so there's sailing do I want to rush iron working quickly in order to just get some defense up or do we just assume we'll be fine I think I might actually need to rush iron working here which I didn't want to do I wanted to put the harbor down beggars can't be choosers though they might just be going for the barb camp that will let me buy a skirmisher oh, I tell you what that could have been useful if that was a decent unit skirmisher is not what I need right now not at all another builder I need better tiles come on work for me some good tiles like these ones this is what i need more iron more horse they're backing off they're backing off okay that's fine political philosophy i don't think that classical republic in this instance is actually the best option for me i might go autocracy plus one to every yield shoving everything i mean great person points 15 percent is quite tempting but don't forget ladies and gentlemen with the wide and tall mod i am going to be getting up to 90 percent extra great people points in this city the question is whether or not the housing in the Immunity is going to be worth it, which it would. It, may, it would make this city ecstatic. But there are longer term possibilities for housing and happiness when you've only got one city. I'm doing it. We're going to go autocracy. We're going for the weird one. First one to adopt tier two. Amazing. Conscription. Urban planning. First envoy counts as two. And we've got Twilight Valor to use if we get attacked, actually. That would be handy. But in the meantime, land surveyors. Cost of purchasing tiles is decreased. Yeah, that's really useful. Some sugar for me. Oh, I am ecstatic. The power was in me all along. There's such a huge army here. I'm hoping the only reason this army is on the border here is because Gaul is beating barbs, but I, I feel like that might be quite a um, optimistic approach. They are killing barbs. I know you've denounced me, but look, you attacked me, all right? Don't be bitter about something that you caused. Cheaper tile buying. I actually want Lisbon to grow as quickly as possible. I wouldn't mind grabbing these tiles just to stop Gaul from culture bombing them with a mine. That is the problem with Gaul on your border. They are very likely to do that. Pasture, extra horse, extra immunity from Temple of Artemis. Government Plaza complete. Now I do want the ans uh, which is it, audience chamber for extra happiness, extra housing, just to keep the one city growing as quickly as possible. I'm thinking campus might be the more urgent cause. So let's build that as fast as I can. Chop down the woods whilst the city has an empty production queue and then it overflows into the campus, which was six turns, now it's four. Pingala needs grants at some point but I'm going to pick up Armani, start the tour because I did see Granada hasn't been claimed by anyone yet so I will claim that for some era score and some map visibility. All right, what are you going to do, Gaul? Are you going to attack me? You're thinking about it, aren't you? Now they're going for that barb. They're actually shielding me from the barb, which is very polite of them. That city's going to flip to loyalty. <sighs> Don't put the governor in right over there. If, if this flips, if this becomes a three city, I'm going to go and attack it because then what I can do is raise it to the floor rather than giving it back to anyone. That could be very handy. Right, military tradition means that I've got flanking bonuses now. I like that. We want to go recorded history. So we'll go mysticism, drama and poetry, recorded history like that. And as much as this gold would be really handy being used on literally anything else, I will continue buying tiles that are useful to me. And land surveyors, I'm actually going to keep that card in and put strategos in. If I can pick up a single great general, Boudicca, to keep my land totally safe, that would be something really useful. Imhotep is also up next on the engineers, so maybe rushing an engineer here would be a really good play as well. I like it when the options start opening up. That's always really fun, when you've got loads and loads of different strategies and tactics that you could employ. There's nothing worse when you, when you look at a game and you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I really don't know. It's all, it's all bad. Campus. Built. What's next? Library? Watermill? I haven't got any farmable resources or oh, there is a rice out there. Okay, maybe I could work towards that. But audience chamber will guarantee the growth of my city for a little bit and it will give me one of every resource because of autocracy. So let's go that first. I tell you what, I did so little extra gold here. Yeah, there you go. Right now I can afford this silver. Put the mine down. Now, even if gold do culture bomb round, I've got all the good stuff around here. That makes me feel a little better. Huge burst of era score as I take over the city state. Hello, Ottomans. Lovely to meet you. We've found Crater Lake. We found the Ottomans. We 
Eve becomes suzerain of Granada. Granada is actually very useful. I mentioned this before, but Alcazar, where you have tiles that are very high in appeal, like for instance this one, that would be worth a really, really tasty amount of culture and science. Two culture, two science, which when you've only got one city, that isn't a bad move. Maybe I'll try and get that tile before it's nabbed up. I mean, there are more and more cities appearing around me every day. I don't like this. Granada looks like it is in the process of being killed. Again, not a huge fan of that, but there's Hong Kong down to the south. I think Armani Tower could continue. I don't have a builder anywhere near this yet. No, I'm not going to wait for the Alcazar. We're going to move to Hong Kong. I'm going to send you on. I'm going to spend my envoy just giving myself one production in the capital towards buildings, which helps on the audience chamber. We're just defending. Up until the point that I can send scouts out, we're just defending. This one is just teasing me. Make a trade route. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, as soon as I get a harbour out, I'll start sending galleys. We'll find someone on the coast. We'll be able to send at least one trade route out. Trade is going to be one of the most important things for this one city challenge. Portugal is difficult. They can only trade with people on the coast. But if you can nab it, it will come good really quickly. You just have to be very, very patient. Very patient. Yep, this is the sort of thing that Gaul is really annoying for. Oh, I'm just going to pop down a mine and grab all of that territory up. Okay, sure, if you want to do that, you can. But I would appreciate it if you didn't. How about we just don't? How do you feel about that option? If we just said no. You know, I realize one thing I like to do on this channel is I like to thank the channel supporters on Coffee and Patreon for all the support they give me by naming units where I can. And given the siege of Fort Lisbon and how well we defended against it, I think naming units is probably a really good thing. So the level three archers of the south, welcome into planet Janet. The garrison of Fort Lisbon, Mixomatosis. The guardian of the southern pass, Mushkin24, you are the supporters that hold the flame in the darkness. Don't let me down. What's that? Mashipishi. Oh, Mashipishi did get built, but not right there. Saved up enough gold now for a watermill. Again, era score. Anything that gives you era score. That's what we're kind of looking at here. We must get the heroic age. I need it. And let's buy this rice tile, which is now a five food tile because of the watermill. Amazing. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to avoid following Buddhism in this game. We're just going to have to accept it. There's Arabia. There's Nubia honor to meet you both i believe that's hong kong yep hong kong has revealed more of the world to me istanbul has been taken over by nubia oh my lord that is chaos over there hong kong gives me city projects that'll be handy for great people points if say i wanted to rush an engineer or a general or a scientist to vote all of the classical era scientists have already gone good to know that we have options if we need them so let's remind ourselves of what buddhism gives us now that it's been thrust upon us good are a pretty cool two housing one sorry one housing to food. 50% purchase cost reduction for campus and theatre square district buildings in cities with temple tall extension. That could be useful as well. So maybe putting a holy city or holy site in the city. It's not the highest of priorities, but it wouldn't be that bad an idea. Yeah, let's keep that one in mind. Celestial navigation is cool. I think I might just immediately work the harbour now. Just selling everything I can. This is kind of what I do between turns. Sometimes I don't really show this, but it's just resources. Strategics, luxuries. I, I, I play the market. I sell what I can. Um, This harbour is plus zero. The actual harbour itself is pretty useless, but that's not why I'm getting it. It's just access to the sea. I want to be able to find everyone. We need to be able to get into the world as quick as we can. Right. Hermetic Order would give me a unique university, but oh look, Portugal already has one. Plus, Ley Lines would be quite the gamble right now. Void Singers, if we went really heavy on faith, if Chinggeti was in the game, maybe? But Grants, I think, is what I'm going to do for now. Because we are getting a couple of great people points. Not many, like plus one at the moment, but we will start picking them up in, in fun things like admirals. Okay, here come the barbs. We had a little bit of peace, just a, a moment of peace from them. They are returning, but this time we have a significantly larger force. So we'll bring this to bear, I think. Everyone just retreat a little bit. Stay on defensive terrain. You can buy a horseman for 191, pull them into my land, get them to attack me, and then we will retaliate with a bunch of archer fire. I think we've got the defenses here. They may even run in and attack this archer if I'm lucky. Now, they attacked the warrior on the hill. Ooh, that was a lot stronger than I hoped it would be. Yeah, wow, the barbs are suddenly attacking with great force. I don't like that at all. One attack, two attacks. Okay, we've got a more defendable line. Prefer it if you just went away. If you if you just didn't, I, I would like that, but that might be too much to ask. Selling some iron means, however, that I could buy a horseman of my very own. I'm going to defend it in my land. I have a horseman now. It's not going to improve Fort Lisbon, unfortunately. It has to be a unit I build or upgrade. Barbarian units don't increase the garrison strength of the city, but 
not a problem. The barbs hopefully will be able to fight off. Oh, there's a fourth one. There's a fourth one and oh, the horseman took a lot of damage there. I'm gonna have to pull you back immediately, which is not what I wanted to do. Luckily though, I've got a nice opportunity to get another attack in. So they can swarm me. They can swarm me here, but I don't think there's a way they can get multiple attacks on the same unit. Maybe this myxomatosis might be a little bit under threat. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if I can summon reinforcements in some way. Yeah, I could upgrade to a warrior and uh, warrior into a swordsman next turn. We might do that. I could bribe them to stay out as well, but that feels like cheating. That feels like I'm not embracing the fight, you know? Come at me. Ah, the warrior got killed. I should have bribed them. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll use this warrior instead. That none of them were named units, so we don't we don't care for them that much. But look at look at this fleet of archers. Go on then. That's a little better, isn't it? Another governor. Now Pingala being leveled up later would be quite handy. But one thing I will do is start to put promotions in Liang because I want to get down to reinforced materials so that I can buy fourth and fifth ring tiles. That'll just help me against the AI a little bit. You can see I'm also rushing the diplomatic quarter because I'm autocracy. I want to get that down as quickly as I. Can can for the extra yields in my city. Land survey is very handy, but I'm going to just cycle that in and out as I as I need it. Natural philosophy just gives me a touch more science. Yes, I do possess the wisdom of Solomon. You're right. That's how I describe myself. One with the wisdom of Solomon. They went straight for the pillage. Of course they did. My walls? That has just given me a little bit of era score. I'm going to finish the harbor in three turns. That will give me era score from mathematics as well. Okay, this is looking good. Horseback riding now into apprenticeship. That'll give me mana arms. Once I've got mana arms, I think I might declare a couple of angry wars and just beat these cities back a little bit. We'll see how it goes. See how I can play the grievance game. Now the skirmishes are attacking me, right? Yeah, you are not being chill. That's fine. My swordsman can just man the pass as my archers now climb the hills to get a better look. Oh, there's a trade route to me. Don't tempt me. Don't, don't taunt me with these things. Oh, my swordsman's just being shredded. No, 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 no. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. But my archer line holds. I can bring the swordsman back. I can move the horse in. Okay, as long as I have a defensive unit in the way, just to stop the AI from getting too many ideas, I think we'll be okay. Industrial zone. Actually, the industrial zone might be a really good move for me. Although I'll put the aqueduct down as fast as I can just to lock it in place, and then I might go for the industrial zone after. But with three turns left, I'm going to finish the harbor. That should give me my third district, which should boost mathematics, which should give me the golden age. And these barbs, these barbs are showing no chill. Please, go away. I don't want to have have to keep fighting you. I really, really do not. Attack, attack, attack attack? Yes, the attacking works. Golden Age is secure. I'm at 10 population, which means now Wide and Tall is going to start coming into play. Next population, once I get to 11, uh, nothing will happen. When I get to 12, I will start getting bonuses. 10% on pretty much every yield as I go up in pop. So pop is now really important for me. Speaking of, I think I might just pick the granary up. Yeah, units would be, be, <laughs> would be the clever move, probably. I could buy a man at arms from those barbs. Oh yeah, actually that is, that is the clever move. As long as I can buy barbarian units like this. There's no real need to keep strategics, you know, because I'm not using them. Right, bam, there's the mana arms. Oh, that's a more powerful unit. Right. As soon as this city-state converts itself from a barb camp, I think we'll be we'll be laughing, but it's just getting to that point is the problem. And let's start to galley spam, actually. I want to find the world. If I can find a single trade route, that'll be really good, because at the moment, still, even with a harbor, no trade routes. There's a world out there. We know there's a southern coast down here, Maybe. Maybe there'll be something for me. You never know. The general has literally been and gone before I even noticed. Wow. Okay, we're not getting Boudicca. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Maritime Industries instead. It's a heroic age. Oh, that's wonderful. So we can pick three things. Three things. I'm not going to pick Exodus. That is useless. So we've got some other options. Nobles and Peasants. This now gives me plus one immunity for a city with three specialty districts and plus two if it has four. So at the moment it would be worth plus one. That's okay. But it would also give plus one food for specialty districts next to improvements with housing and a food bonus. That's really handy. So basically you put a farm down and all of the districts around it start getting extra food. It means you can grow the city really quickly. Builders also recover a charge for the first four created improvements with housing and food. It's like infinite charges. Definitely worth using. We'll pick up that. Monumentality I don't need because I'm not really using many civilian units. No settlers and I only need a couple of builders with nobles and uh, peasants. Perchants? 
Merchants and nobles. So we're going to go through inquiry and pen brush and voice. More culture and better Eurekas and inspirations mean that I can actually boost through the tree a little quicker. I'm on 15 techs. Arabia, who is in fifth, is only on 18. So I'm only three techs behind. We're keeping track, but it's going to get increasingly difficult to do that. So we should just work on that for a second. Right. The galleys are all spamming out whilst I've got the double production card in. I want to get a builder as quickly as possible. So once again, I'm going to empty my banks, empty for strategics until we can afford a builder. I just I refuse to trade with Gaul unless I can take the money up front. I do not trust them. And this Barb Camp. Oh my lord, we're actually finally getting there now. My first galley. Go into the world. Find land. More importantly, can you find somewhere that we can trade with? That would be very handy if you could do that. Thank you. Cheers. By the way, I'm not rushing to buy the tiles around these areas because I know I'm going to be raising that city at some point anyway. Is that an encampment? No, that's a holy site. Okay, I was going to say, if you're building an encampment on my borders, I would not be happy. Ooh, production of units. This will let me spam the galleys out really quickly. And trade routes to, uh, honestly, who cares? We'll go cultural because it's at the top. Trade production. There you go. Right. Loads of boosts. Now we've got galleys being popped out everywhere. You head out in this direction, Mr. Galley. Find me someone to trade with. Oh, I like it when people buy open borders and then nowhere near me. A little bit of extra free gold. Right, here's the builder. Eid request. Yeah, God, man, I'll join him with that. Military emergency. Ooh, it's for this city, which they're going to lose to loyalty anyway. So I, I tem I'm tempted to join it for the visibility because it will give me visibility with everybody else. But I am at most threat from Gaul if I join in on it. You know what? I will join in on it. It's it's scary. But if they lose this city anyway, which they won't because of loyalty, but the visibility will give me loads of information, especially on people that could be on the coast. I'm hoping England will. Who joined in on it? Only camera. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go and settle on the coast. Go and settle on the coast. Yes, do it. Do it. Indonesia. Oh, yes. You're likely to be on the coast. You're programmed to be on the coast. She's on the coast. We found a trade route. So, on turn 87, ladies and gentlemen, I have realized that either I am an absolute idiot or the game is devious in a way that I hadn't realized before. Now, I'm sure people in the comments will have probably picked up on this by this point. But there is a slight problem with Thought Lisbon. I was thinking, it's strange. I should be able to trade with this Indonesian city. I, I should. I've got a harbor now. The trade route goes through. I've done this before. You can put cities in Portugal away from the sea with a harbor and send routes out. But it wasn't popping up on the available routes and I'm just scratching my head over it and then I did a little bit of digging. So this is the wiki for Portugal and it starts off by saying there are more caveats and restrictions to this ability than meets the eye, which it, it it is really true. The amount of rules the game puts in to make Portugal's trade routes work is exceptionally complicated, but then there is a snag. When sending international trade routes, Portuguese traders cannot traverse more than one land tile before they either embark or reach a city center. This means that cities with harbors in the third ring cannot be the target of a Portuguese trade route. Ah, here's the saving grace, right? Because this is a really, really random thing. If you put a harbor in the second ring, it works. I've done it before. I didn't even think that the third ring would be a problem. And then the wiki even goes, it is unknown whether this is a bug or intentional. So that makes me feel a little bit better. So is the run blocked? Are we going to have a Portugal one city challenge where we can't trade at all for the rest of the game? Is this going to be a zero trade route Portugal challenge, which is not what I intended to do at all? Well, maybe, but there is a little bit of a hope. Whilst it means that Portuguese cities whose harbors are on the third ring cannot send international trade routes, unless there is another maritime access point like a canal. If I use a canal, there is still a chance that this might work. Now, the big problem with Thought Lisbon is I pulled it two tiles away from the coast in any direction in order to get all of the land. And I still think in the long run, this will give us the maximum chance of having an absolute super city. Like, that is not a problem in the long run. No, the problem for me is that the canal will not stretch over two tiles. However, there is one canal that will the Panama Canal. Ladies and gentlemen, this run, the trading aspect, if I want to send any of my eight trade routes out to the world, I am going to have to rush and build Panama Canal before anyone else does. This is a Panama Canal speed run now. <laughs> 
Oh lord. I'm not even sure if it will work. I hope it'll work because it'll mean the canal will count as a C tile. So basically, as long as this tile gets popped out into a canal in any way, it'll work. However, the problem is Panama Canal is so weird and there's still a chance that Nita might come and ruin it. Actually, do I need to unlock Nita in order to get it? No, I don't. Oh, that's useful. It means I do have to stick to one side of the tech tree pretty heavily. That's fine. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to beeline Panama Canal. I love it. I'm going to just get rid of this setup. I need to keep all of the land, not necessarily three, but open to whatever arrangement of Panama Canal I can get. It's going to be too important. So instead, I'm going to end up building probably my industrial zone over in this area. There are lots of strategics. I can put the aqueduct down. It's not a bad area to have an industrial zone, especially if I pop another mine down on that tile, it goes to plus six. So we've got the same result, but science. Science is is so important now. It's really important. Um, First of all, I do want Indonesia to be my friend. So we'll send them a delegation. I'll open borders up. It's still going to mean that Indonesia is probably my most likely trade partner. I might just have to work at it a little bit. Science is really all important now. Really, really all important. Well, best way to do that is to grow the city out with Pingala and also to start gaining all of the bonuses. As soon as I get to 20 population, I'll be on 90% bonus science, culture, faith, great people points. And this is where my golden age comes in. Nobles and peasants, plus one food to specialty districts that are around an improvement that gives both food and housing. You heard a little noise there when I put it down and you'll now see plus one food, plus one food, plus one food. The other fun thing is it doesn't use a charge of my builder, but that's now effectively three extra food in this city. So I'm going to plaster farms around all of my specialty districts and this will massively increase my food per turn. Maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe the game will think about it and realize I've been really, really good and it should reward me, but uh, the chances of that happening are now uh, pretty low. Diplomatic quarter as well. I really did want to put a diplomatic quarter down. So I think I will on this tile. It'll give it extra food, but I can't afford to put it around my capital because I need to keep all of these tiles open to the Panama Canal. So the plus one envoy, yep, really handy. Would love to use it. I cannot afford it right now. Cannot afford it. Let's go for another builder. Let's work the industrial zone. I, I cannot believe this. This is both the most annoying thing that's happened in a long time and the best simultaneously. Actually, thinking about this, I am at war with Gaul. I probably should be building troops with the World Congress now. We're getting double experience. This is a time, this is an opportunity in this emergency war to raise a few cities to the floor to give me more space in the long run. Can't believe that. That's ridiculous. What, what a weird set of rules, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people did know that. I'm sure this is a well-known thing, but I have never seen that rule in action before because I've just, I've always been able to use harbors to get Portuguese cities to trade with the sea. Never did I think there was a specific rule about it being in the third ring. Ah, what are you going to do? Yeah, the niche in Arsenal is not going to be a thing. And look at that. The camera is just, they're making it even worse. They're like, yeah, we're not even going to bother settling on the coast. Not even going to bother. Do I want the city state to appear? It's not on the coast. I'm actually going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it, I think. Candy's on the coast? Okay, that's the city-state. cat is on the coast. Still can't trade with anyone. Yeah, no, this is this is a Panama Canal speed run now. Can Massey? Oh, why? Why would you put that? Oh, this, we, we really, this is a tech specialism. We, we have to rush this. Oh, everything is going to go into tech now. And finally, a very special shout-out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennest, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Diebel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Joseph Bianconi, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Franken Sense Battle Sword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke79. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.